We're now very happy to be joined by Rabbi Harry Rosenberg, founder of Light of the Infinite, here to talk more about this always fascinating topic. It's good to see you. I know we're not in person today. Next time in Jerusalem, my friend. I mean, I'm looking forward very much so. So um, let's start with, listen, I know you've talked a lot about this, just not even just on the air, but you and I have had these conversations before. From this Yatta community we just heard about in this report where there's many vestiges, we saw mikvahs, we saw a lot of uh, evidence. Is this a, a community from your research that you've known about specifically in the areas around it? Yes, of course. Yatta is one of the elephants in the room where almost everyone in the village has historical Jewish roots. Um, they're making up a lot of the percentage of terrorism. And if you ask them outright if they have Jewish history, Jewish bloodline, they'll tell you, of course. And if you even go to the Wikipedia page for Yatta, it'll tell you this is a historical Jewish village. Wow. So how many years like, have, have those, this community been there? I mean, is this since the destruction of the temple, or this is all just in more modern history? No, in general, the phenomenon with um, Arabic-speaking Palestinian Jewish families who were once Jewish we see different periods of time where certain uh, clans could trace back. So, for example, there's certain tribes here that have been here for 2,000 years. Tanakh says when the Judeans were kicked out of the land, certain grape tillers were left in the land to take care of the vineyards. Right. And if you see the people in this uh, yatta, their last name means winemaker. Wow. That's a very common name. So we're going to continue after the break. Are... I'm interrupting you, Harry. I'm sorry. we got to take a break, but we're coming back. Very interesting. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Welcome back to Holy Land Uncovered. We're continuing with uh, Rabbi Harry Rosenberg. Sorry to cut you off before the commercial break. You were saying something uh, uh, very profound about the meaning of the name, the last name in itself. Continue. Yes, of course. Um, well, there's a few different waves of times where we see there was uh, forced conversions happening in the land with the Judean population. But just to be clear, there were Judeans in this land for 2,000 years uh, who never left and went into exile. They were left to be the the winemakers, the, the tillers of the land. And if you even see the murderer of uh, Ari Fold, Hillel Fold's brother, he came from a village called Yatta, and his last name meant winemaker. Now, Yatta, we know, was a Jewish village, and the winemaker families from this village, we know, were once Jewish people who went through forced conversions. Um, exactly which year and which period of time these forced conversions happened with different families is, uh, is questionable, because certain families we see under floorboards they have Judaic items from Spain, from 1400s, from the mm. expulsion. I mean, they ran from Spain, they made it to Israel, and boom, they went through the forced conversions here instead of to Christianity in Europe. And we also see some people in the last 100 years with the Hebron riots, etc., who would rather have converted than been raped and killed and beaten. So there's a lot of trauma and there's a lot of history uh, buried under this scenario. Right. So what do you make of the fact that they found all these mikvahs? So they were like many B'nai seem or, you know, descendants of those the Jews kicked out of Spain and Portugal, seemingly carrying on kind of somewhat similar, similar customs with the challah. And I don't know if they were counting stars or things like this, but we're seeing similar customs that were kept for all of these centuries. Yes, for, even forgetting the customs that they were seeing uh, embedded in there. If you ask someone from Yatta, let's say you have a taxi driver who's from Yatta, and you say, hey, quick question are you Jewish? He'll give you a whole half hour rant about how his grandparents told him he's really Jewish and they're lighting candles under baskets, but it's a secret because they can get killed and persecuted if anyone finds out about it. And I have multiple recordings on my phone of these type of conversations uh, where I'm just too curious to ask. And um, I was able to look back in the Torah and see, I guess, a basis for why or how this is happening to us today. Wow. So how do you explain when you're saying many, I know we've talked about this in the past, even like in Afghanistan and the Pashtuns said it'd be obviously also descendants of Jews, but many of them became Taliban, but are the Taliban really still carrying on Jewish customs? So you're saying many are also absorbed in, in, in the terrorism circuit? Like why? This is not my initial idea. This was, um, you know, first uh, Ben Svi, one of the first prime ministers of Israel wrote mm -hmm. about this. and. Um, this was documented for the history of the state that the majority of the terrorism today in Israel that's happening is coming specifically from the percentage of people who once had Jewish blood in them. And there's speculation of why this is going on, and I'll tell you the science and I'll tell you the spirituality behind it. Um, they say that perhaps because they're not really accepted as real Arabs, meaning they're called Musa Arabim, like uh, fake hidden Arabs, like a derogatory term, a Marana would be called to a converso from Europe. So there's a derogatory term called for these Arabs by other Arabs letting them know you're not really Arab, you're not pure blood. 
And then the Jewish people, we're not accepting them. We're not, we're not their brothers. So they really don't have an identity. So this act of terror, this act of stabbing is like kind of a, a cry for help saying, look how serious I am. I am somebody. I am the, this Arab. I am accepted. I am so religious. So it's a cry for help almost, uh, so to say, psychologically. Wow, that is so deep and so profound and uh, endlessly interesting. Rabbi Harry, thank you. And until next time when we can talk about uh, more on this topic. Thanks again.